Last night, the first round of the 2024 NBA Draft took place at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn, New York. And for the first time ever, the NBA has made this a two-night affair. So last night was just the first round, with the second round coming tonight. Today in this video, we are going to be breaking down every single pick of the first round. So let's get right into it. Starting with the first pick of the NBA Draft, the Atlanta Hawks, they had just a 3% chance of getting the number one pick in the draft lottery. But at the same time, this probably was not the most exciting draft to land the number one pick in. And with their selection, they take Zachary Risache, a 6'9", 19 year old out of France. In Europe last season, he would average 10.7 points per game, shooting 38.7% from three. I understand why they made this pick. I'm not going to say it was a head scratcher. However, at the same time, both no ceilings and Sam Vecini had him at five on their big board. Speaking of no ceilings, Tyler Metcalf was generous enough to contribute to this video, giving us what he thought on a couple of these prospects. Here's what he had to say about the Hawks number one pick. Zachary Risache is one of the biggest names in the 2024 NBA draft because of how much he improved as a shooter. That was the biggest question mark with this game. Now on a sample size in a full season of over 50 games, Risache was one of the best off ball shooters in this entire draft class. At a minimum, at the top of this draft, Risache is looking to be an extremely high level 3 and D wing. If he can improve his handle, continue to improve his shooting, and improve his playmaking, the upside for him is really, really exciting. I completely agree with Tyler on that analysis. I think it's just hard if you're a Hawks fan for this to be your number one overall pick. Usually, when you're getting a number one overall pick, you're hoping to get the face of a franchise, and Zachary doesn't feel like that type of player especially a draft like this I'm sure there's going to be players coming out of this draft that will be those guys going into it however it was not obvious who those guys were I'm hoping for the best for Zachary but like Tyler said it's going to depend on if that shooting he developed this year is sustainable long term if it is he should at least safely be a good three and D player with of course upside to develop into much more than just that and with the second pick in the NBA draft the Washington Wizards select Big man Alexander Saar, a 19-year-old Frenchman as well. He stands at 7'1 with a 7'4 wingspan, averaged 9.6 points per game last season, four and a half rebounds, and one and a half blocks per game. He joins fellow Frenchman and last year's seventh overall pick, Bilal Koulibaly, as the beginning of a nice young core in Washington. And remember, the Wizards also have the 14th pick in this draft to add to that core. The thing with Star is, can he develop the offensive game? People that are really high on him believe that the sky is the limit for him on the offensive end. Think about big men like Chet Holmgren that are very perimeter oriented on on offense but can still score inside as well and obviously the defense that comes with that rim protection and mobility alex only shot it about 26 percent from three this year however most people believe he will develop an outside shot if he doesn't his upside is most certainly going to be capped. Moving on to the third pick in the draft, the Houston Rockets. There were talks about them trading out of this pick, even some crazy talks after they acquired the Suns future first from the Brooklyn Nets just a few days ago, trading that number three pick plus more for Kevin Durant. But instead, they take Reed Shepard, freshman out of the University of Kentucky. I have to say immediately, I could absolutely be biased towards some of these college guys with how much much college basketball I watch, but Reed last year averaged 12 and a half points per game, shot 52.1% from three on 4.4 attempts per game. And I personally think that Reed Shepard is going to be the best player in this draft. Last season, the Rockets were just 23rd in the NBA in team three point percentage. So Reed is obviously going to help out super well there, but he's more than just that. He is a creator. He has great instinctual passing. 
He also has an absurd 42 inch vertical, which was tied with three other guys for best in the class. In an obvious apprentice and transition plan from Fred Van Vliet at the point guard position, he's going to fit perfectly in with guys like Amon Thompson, Jalen Green, and Cam Whitmore. Super excited for the Houston Rockets to get Reed Shepard. And this is why I think the West is going to be scary this year. The Rockets were 41 and 41 without Shangoon down the stretch last year. Reed Shepard should be able to contribute immediately, especially with the shooting. This video is brought to you by Manscaped, the global men's lifestyle brand that is revolutionizing men's grooming. And today we are showcasing the Perfect Package 5.0. And of course, the headliner for this package is the Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra. My favorite part about this is they continually make the skin safe technology better, which is an absolute game changer for me. And yes, I am married, but I'm telling you guys, married guys need to make sure they take care of themselves as well now with this lawnmower 5.0 you get two different heads this trimmer head is great for starters laying the foundation but where it gets really interesting is when you replace the trimmer head with the new foil blade. They really are a one-two punch. The trimmer blade will do a majority of the work, and then the foil blade comes in and finishes the job, leaving your skin as smooth as can be. Now, the Lawnmower 5.0 also has an LED light on it, which is bigger and better than ever, and it also includes a travel lock to ensure this doesn't go off when you're traveling in your suitcase. And as always, this Lawnmower 5.0 is waterproof, so yes, you can use it in the shower, but don't have too much fun in there. The Perfect Package 5.0 5.0 is also going to come with this crop preserver, an anti-chafing ball deodorant, and of course, a crop soother as well, an aftershave lotion. So what are you waiting for? Join me and the 10 million men worldwide who have chosen Manscaped for our hygiene needs. Head over to manscaped.com and get the perfect package 5.0 Ultra today. Use my code hardwood for 20% off. Yes, 20% off guys plus free shipping worldwide. Trust me when I say this, fellas, your balls will thank you. At pick number four, the San Antonio Spurs draft UConn freshman Stefan Castle. I gotta say about Steph Castle, I think if Reed Shepard is not, Stefan Castle ends up being the best player in this draft. I love this pick for the Spurs. There were a bunch of reports early on in the draft process that Steph Castle's camp was telling teams with point guards do not draft him. He wanted to be a point guard. And I think the fit here with Wemby is absolutely perfect. The Spurs need a point guard. They got theirs. Castle performed on the biggest stage last year for the repeat champs, the Yukon Huskies. And I think he's going to contribute from day one in San Antonio, as long as the jumper can improve, which I believe it can. Steph Castle is going to be an incredible player in the NBA. At number five, the Detroit Pistons take Ron Holland from the G League Ignite. Ron was someone that a lot of people said was going to slide on draft night. However, he does not. I questioned the fit a little bit with Cade Cunningham and obviously guys like Jaden Ivey as well. We'll see how well Ron Holland can play off ball. If you're a Ron Holland believer, you have faith that his three point percentage will continue to improve. He shot below 30% this past season. Clearly this was the Pistons best player available on their personal big board. Number five was another position where a lot of people thought the Pistons were going to be able to trade back from. And I feel like ideally the Pistons would have traded back from number five to a team that really wants someone like Donovan Klingon and taken Ron Holland somewhere around 9, 10 or 11. However, clearly they didn't get that great of offer for someone like Donovan Klingon and they took best player available. Obviously a new GM coming into Detroit. There's going to be a switch up in the roster management in my opinion i don't love the pick just because you need to be filling out this roster with shooting around Cade cunningham and you already have guys that can't really shoot in detroit but clearly detroit believes that ron holland will develop that shooting and all the power to them at pick number six the charlotte hornets take tijon salon another frenchman i feel like we've seen such an influx in french talent over the past couple of years this was a pick that was reported early to be traded obviously those trade talks fell through 
Another developmental guy that's just 18 years old stands at 6'9 with a massive 7'2 wingspan. This type of player is going to take a strong developmental project in order to get to his upside. There's definitely other players I would have preferred in Charlotte's position here. And honestly, at the end of the day, I would have preferred to just move back. But that's the hard thing about a weak draft. You can't really move back and get tons of value. At number seven, the Portland Trailblazers finally take Donovan Klingon. A lot of people believe he has all defense potential with elite rim protection. He was the anchor of that terrifying UConn defense. And the only thing the Blazers have to figure out now is what they're going to do with this front court. DeAndre Ayton is there. Obviously, Robert Williams as well. I love the pick, but I feel like Portland has a lot of things they have to figure out with the rest of their roster. At pick number eight, it seemed like right away the San Antonio Spurs were drafting Rob Rob Dillingham, freshman out of Kentucky. And I loved this immediately when I heard it. I actually started driving shortly after this pick. And to my surprise, when I heard that the Timberwolves were trading for Rob Dillingham, I was in disbelief. This was the move of the night. As a Timberwolves fan, I'm absolutely thrilled. Tim Connolly had nothing but extraordinary things to say about Rob Dillingham. He's going to contribute immediately. This is the exact type of player that the Timberwolves needed in the Western Conference Finals. Someone who can create his own shots. Of course, he's a little undersized, but he shot 44% from three last year. He's absolutely electric, and his size can be hidden on an elite defense like Minnesota's. Minnesota gives up their 2031 unprotected first and a protected 2030 pick swap for Dillingham, which goes to show you how weak NBA GMs think this draft is, but this is one of my favorite picks of the night so far. The Memphis Grizzlies take Zach Eady at nine, absolutely a reach. I'm higher on Eady than most. I think he's going to be a contributing player in the NBA. Last season, he had one of the best seasons that college basketball has seen in the past 25 years, averaged 25 points, 12.2 boards, shot 71% from the free throw line on extremely high volume. I am terrified of the Memphis Grizzlies in the West next year. My personal hot take is they are going to reclaim home court advantage and get a top four seed going into the NBA playoffs. At number 10, the Utah Jazz select Cody Williams, brother of OKC wing Jalen Williams out of Colorado. He averaged 12 points a game last year, shot 41.5% from three. If Cody can just put on some muscle density in his first couple seasons, I think he's going to be a very good player for the Utah Jazz. Great pick from Danny Ainge. At number 11, the Chicago Bulls take hometown kid, Modest Buzelis. I know Kenny, Pierre, Mike, and Derek are going to be excited about this one. His shooting wasn't there last year with G League Ignite. He shot just 26% from three. However, at Sunrise Academy, he shot 42.4% his senior year. I don't think he's going to be that bad of a three-point shooter in the NBA. Honestly, I have kind of a hot take. I don't think G League Ignite is very good for these young kids in terms of development and really showcasing who they can be in the NBA. That's purely anecdotal, by the way. I have zero proof to back that up. It's just how I feel, but I'm excited to see what Modest does for Chicago. At number 12, Sam Presti and the Oklahoma City Thunder draft Nikola Topic another Serbian. I would have loved to see someone like Dalton Connect go here, really go for that win now mode, but we know Sam Presti, we know his process. I'm not saying I'm doubting the pick. I just don't know if Nikola Topic fits in with Oklahoma City and what they want to do. They just traded Josh Giddy. I'm not doubting the talent at all. I just don't know if I believe in this fit with the Thunder. At number 13, the Sacramento Kings draft Devin Carter a point guard out of Providence. Last year, he averaged 19 points per game. He actually rebounded incredibly well for a guard, 8.7 rebounds per game, and also was tied with a freakish vertical at the top of the class, 42 inches. I like this pick for Sacramento because it fills a couple holes for them. Primarily on the defensive end, you have someone who is a good on-ball defender. And on the offensive end, taking the ball out of Deer and Fox's hands, giving him a rest every once in a while, I think is something that was super important for the Kings. Hours before the NBA draft started, 
Denny Advia was traded to the Portland Trailblazers away from the Washington Wizards. And in return, the Wizards received Malcolm Brogdon, the number 14 pick in this NBA draft, a 2029 first and two seconds. And so with the 14th overall pick, the Washington Wizards selected Bub Carrington out of Pittsburgh. As a freshman, he averaged 13.8 points per game, shot 32% from three. Sam Vecini had him higher than consensus on his big board at number eight, while most mock draft aggregates had him anywhere from 15 to 18. Point guard was definitely a position of need for Washington, and they got their presumable point guard of the future with this pick. At number 15, the Miami Heat select Khalil Ware, big man out of Indiana. He averaged 15.9 points per game last year. Bam Adebayo is not your traditional big man, so this is something that makes sense for Miami. However, at the same time, most mock drafts had Ware going somewhere in the mid-20s. And that's what we've been seeing in this draft. Teams just taking their guy at their position. It doesn't feel like many teams were able to move back. At number 16, the Philadelphia 76ers take Jared McCain, freshman guard out of Duke. I love this pick for Philadelphia. I think he's going to fit really nice alongside Tyrese Maxey. And I really think he could contribute right away for this Philadelphia 76ers team that desperately needs to get better this offseason, especially with the New York Knicks going all in. At number 17, the Los Angeles Lakers take Dalton Connect. I also love this pick for LA. Dalton Connect was a victim of sliding in this draft. Do what seemingly is completely due to his age at 23 years old. But that age factor should not be a problem for the Los Angeles Lakers. They're in win now mode and Dalton Connect is about as ready of a prospect as you can be. He was by far the second best player in college basketball last season. Led his Tennessee team to an elite eight. He is an incredible scorer all around. Will be able to play off ball. I'm excited to see how JJ Redick uses Dalton Connect. I wouldn't be surprised if he makes all rookie first team in his rookie season. At number 18, the Orlando Magic take Tristan De Silva out of the University of Colorado. He doesn't have the ceiling that a lot of these projects have, but he has such a high floor older prospect but he's an incredible shooter good team defender at pick number 19 the raptors take jacoby walter freshman out of baylor the nba loves wings with good size that can score that's what jacoby walter is at number 20 the cleveland cavaliers select jalen tyson first first round pick for the university of california since jalen brown in 2016 and just the 12th first round draft pick for the university in its history in his junior season he averaged 19.6 points per game shot 36 percent from three at 21 the new orleans pelicans take freshman out of baylor eve missy Standing at 6'11", he averaged 10.7 points per game last year, 5.6 boards. This is another developmental project. The Pelicans have a hole at center. Obviously, they have Jonas Valanciunas, but sometimes Valanciunas gets played off the court due to his lack of athleticism. But he's also a restricted free agent right now, so we'll see if they resign him. I think the Pelicans are in a super intriguing position. My personal stance is that they should completely rebuild. Trade away Brandon Ingram and CJ McCollum. The West is only getting better. Build around Zion, Herb Jones, and Trey Murphy. Of course, Jordan Hawkins as well. At number 22, the Denver Nuggets trade up with the Phoenix Suns and take Deron Holmes out of Dayton. I love this for Denver. They have to find a way when Nikola Jokic takes breaks and is on the bench to be effective. And Deron Holmes has a little bit of position fluidity as a big man. He should be a great piece coming off the bench for them. At number 23, the Milwaukee Bucks shocked everyone and took AJ Johnson. He played in the Australian NBL last year, averaged just 2.9 points per game, shooting 37% from the field. He's super thin, stands at 6'5 and only 167 pounds. This is going to be a developmental project, which I don't love for a Milwaukee Bucks team that is all in on winning now. Most mock drafts had him going in the mid 30s. I feel like the Bucks could have gotten him at 33, but I guess maybe they had some word that someone else was interested before then. 
At number 24, the Wizards select Keyshawn George out of the University of Miami. The Wizards traded 26 and 51 to make this pick. Obviously, Keyshawn was someone very high on their list. At pick number 25, the New York Knicks select another Frenchman off the board, Pacom Dadier. I think this pick makes sense for the Knicks. You're hedging your bet a little bit, going all in, giving up five firsts for Mikel Bridges. Pacom is 18 years old. He will not play right away, and he probably won't play for a couple seasons. They're just going to allow him to develop as a player. At pick number 26, the Oklahoma City Thunder take five second round picks send them to the Knicks and get this pick where they take Weber State's Dylan Jones, a 6'6 wing that practically averaged a double-double the past three seasons in college. This was a reach when it came to the mock draft aggregates. Most had him anywhere from 41 to 43, but Sam Presti clearly is in love with him. They give up five seconds to get him. At number 27, the Minnesota Timberwolves take Terrence Shannon Jr., one of the best scorers in college basketball last year. He's older at 23 years old, but I think this is perfect for the Timberwolves. Again, I'm biased. I'm a Wolves fan, but I was wanting Terrence Shannon Jr. at 27 because the only thing the Wolves need right now are players that can score without help. Terrence Shannon has a big body. We'll see if he can develop some more finesse to his game. But I think as an eighth guy off the bench, this is the exact type of player the Wolves are looking for. At 28, the Phoenix Suns take Ryan Dunn out of Virginia, an incredible defensive player. Obviously, we saw how badly they got torched in the playoffs this past season. They did not have a primary on-ball defender. Ryan Dunn solves that. At pick 29, the Jazz draft Isaiah Collier out of USC, a guy who was projected to go in the top 10 earlier in the draft season. Even on draft night, most mocks had him going in the late teens at the worst. I think the Utah Jazz absolutely killed this draft, getting Cody Williams and Isaiah Collier. And Danny Ainge, I think, is still going to try to go star hopping this offseason. I'm excited to see what they're building in Utah. And at pick 30, Baylor Shireman out of Creighton. Another player, if you're a college basketball fan, you have enjoyed watching him over the past couple seasons. Started at South Dakota State, transferred to Creighton last season. And I also love this pick for the Boston Celtics. He's an incredible shooter, incredible decision maker, smart on defense, not the best on ball defender. Obviously his athleticism is lacking, but he can rebound. And he's not going to be asked to have too big of a role for the defending champs. I think this was a great pick for Boston. It seems like they just continue to say, if you cannot shoot threes and you cannot play off ball, you're not for us. And that concludes our first round of the NBA draft. Again, the first year that the rounds one and two are separated into different nights. Heading into round two tonight, some pretty notable players still left on the board. Tyler Kolick, point guard out of Marquette. Kyle Filipowski, big man out of Duke. Johnny Furphy, wing out of Kansas. Tyler Smith, G League Ignite. And lastly, here's a couple takes from you guys on Twitter, what you thought of the first round. My high school basketball coach, Kyle Minky, says this, connect to the Lakers was the steal of the draft. Lakers needed shooting and picking up the SEC player of the year and possibly best shooter in the entire draft was an outstanding addition for them. I completely agree, coach. Born Muse says Baylor Shireman was 100% the right pick for the Celtics last night. Dissolvo says Zach Eady at 9 will not be the worst pick in the top 10. And Best Ball Jesus says Tim Connolly worked the Spurs, stole Shannon. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. As always, we'll see you on the hardwood. Look out for a Jerry West mini documentary coming out later this week. We'll see ya.